several years ago I watched a, uh, a YouTube by uh, uh, Mr. Pete slash Tublicane and he showed putting a motor drive on the back of his Atlas lathe. His premise was that uh, the Atlas lathe did not slow down enough to uh, allow for a good cut so he put a motor drive on the end. And uh, so I thought about it and just the other day I was watching a video by Pragmatic Lee and he showed this uh, motor that he used and this controller uh, and I thought oh that's a pretty good one. He put it on his mill but I thought okay here we can put it in here goes in both directions um, I have it and then when you want to get in you just put your half and gauge your half nuts and off it goes and I find it about 40 but anyway there's links to both of those uh, YouTubes in the uh, introductory uh, statement uh, written statement at the uh, beginning of this uh, now for the next 10 minutes I'll show you a few pictures of the build and then at the end I'll cut some metal for you and uh, the last minute will be a close-up of a cut that uh, is well worth the price of admission. But enjoy and thanks for stopping in. Alright, so uh, I want to make a motor drive for the uh, Z-axis of my Atlas lathe. And uh, first thing we're going to have to do is extend this lead screw out a little bit. I want to put a pulley on it so we'll put a hole in there all right let's center drill this thing Alright, so there you can see the threaded hole in the end of the lead screw and we finished off the, uh, this is going to be the lead screw extension and so it'll just screw into there.
So let's go ahead and start making the base. This is, I got it all scribed out here. And we'll cut it out on the bandsaw and then shape it with the uh, die filer. Okay, I've got the uh, base shaped up. Just milled the bottom, beginning to square it up so that I can finish it off. Alright, so let's tighten this thing up, get it in line here. Make sure you're right on that thing. There it is. Tighten up the clamps. Okay. Okay, everything's tight. Turn on the mill. Okay, here's the arrangement I came up with. Put an extension on the lead screw, put a pulley on there, turn two pulleys. This belt is the same belt that I use for my surface grinder, so it's got now I'll have a spare for each one. This is the motor. Uh, the motor is a uh, uh, 12 volt, uh, moves the uh, seats in your car. It's a car. Uh, uh, brings the seats back and forth, $17 and some odd cents. And some half inch aluminum and a, a one inch, uh, one by three piece of aluminum for the base. Carriage bolt through here, quarter 20 carriage bolt, uh, coal roll steel end here, uh, and it tightens with a jerry bar. And uh, I think that's all I'm thinking of right for now. We'll uh, go upstairs and uh, put the electronics together and uh, come on back down and uh, see how it runs. Well, as you can see, I've made a couple of changes to the uh, to the uh, setup that I showed you a little earlier. I uh, put the pennant together and I've run it for uh, a couple hours and I've cut all kinds of different metals and I played around with different things and probably the most obvious thing you're going to see is I got rid of the two inch pulley and went with a smaller one inch pulley so now we're working one to one and uh, this is now Loctited in place if the Loctite doesn't work I do have enough threads on there to have a good lock washer, uh, lock nut as well so uh, we'll see how that goes uh, I'm still using the belt from my surface grinder, so I could probably have gone with a shorter belt, but I, I like the idea of using both the same belt for both of them. Uh, the second thing you're probably going to notice is the dive weight over there is on the end of a, a rod that I put through here, um, and uh, I needed more tension on, to, on the belt. Uh, I couldn't lock it with the uh, uh, jerry bar tight enough to get what I wanted. I did, the slippage was not acceptable. Um, this works fine. Uh, I'm a clock maker, so when next time I make some weights, uh, I'll take care of that dive weight over there and uh, replace it with a proper weight. Uh, I'm going to play around a little bit more with the weights before I decide exactly how I'm going to do that. Uh, I had some springs, but to be truthful with you, I didn't want to put a spring in there because now to take the pressure off, if I'm not using it, all I do is just drop the belt. It's that simple. You know, installing it and taking it off is that simple. And it'll be even better when I get the, better, uh, the new weight on there. And it works just fine. Now, uh, let's take a look and I'll show you the, uh, this is the, uh, 
12 volt power supply I bought. I think it was $8.50. It's a 5 amp power supply. I got it on eBay. And this is the pendant I made. The box came from Lowe's. I think it's about, I don't know, about $7 at Lowe's. Uh, this is a uh, controller, a microcontroller that I bought online. And uh, it costs 8 bucks, I think, when we're all done. And uh, the switch here is a double pull, double throw that allows me to uh, uh, go backwards and forwards. So let's give you a little demonstration. I'm keeping it on a pendant. I'm not mounting it anywhere. I'm holding it now. And I don't know. I may mount it somewhere. But for right now, I'm just going to hold it. Uh, but here you go. There's the forward direction. And that's 64%. So let's go a little higher. And that's about it right there at 100. And for a finishing cut, I was using about 40. That was about what I was using for the finishing cut. I'm going to give you a good look at that. Uh, some cutting next. And then you can shut that off. Go to the other direction. Turn it back on again. Now it's going in the other direction. And we ramp it up to 100. So it's all less, cost me less than 50 bucks to put it together. Probably about $45 all up uh, when I was done. And uh, you'll see that I also uh, sandblasted it so it's all ready to accept paint. So as soon as I'm done this movie, I think what next, next step is I'm going to uh, uh, take it apart and put some paint on it. Okay, I've got the lead screw moving with the electric motor. I don't have the change gears involved uh, right now, the uh, half nuts involved right yet. But we're, let me just in, engage the half nuts. And we're moving backwards at about what the reading on the thing is 50. So we move it up a little more. So you get an idea of what kind of speed you got. Okay, that's 100. That's about all I'm going to make it do. Now shut it off, make it go forward. I've been playing around with it. I get about the best out of it, between 30 and 60 percent on the uh, meter. And you can shut it off like that and disconnect your fat half nuts and you're ready to cut again. And then when it comes time, let's just turn it on. So we're making a cut by hand. All right, so now we're going to put our finished cut on, a little, add a little to it. Engage your half nuts. Set the speed at about 38. And there we go. Okay, disengage your half nuts, bring it back out, shut it down. You've made now, uh, you know, you can still use your change gears and anything like that. All you got to do is just uh, hook, them up, hook them up and pull your belt off the other end. So the only modification that you made is the, uh, is the uh, threads in the end of the lead screw. Um, I've been playing around with it for a while now. I kind of like it. I'm going to get you a closer up picture of a cut so that you can uh, see the difference in the cuts. 
and then we'll call it a day. All right, there's a piece of aluminum, and I just turned it by hand. That's about the best finish I figure I could get by hand. It's not a bad finish at all, but let's compare it and uh, see what the motor drive does. Got it set at a speed of 32. That's not an RPM or anything like that, it's a percentage. As you can see, it's coming up with a really, really nice finish. 